Pagosa, wow, what a meeting last night for our town council. Lots of news here, big discussion, some interesting public comments, and I'm being charitable with that description. But before we get into it, let's remind ourselves of why we live here and why others want to live here as well. Today I'm drinking a Moral Panic Brute IPA by Scott Brewing and let's jump into this crazy meeting. The consent agenda was quickly approved. To save some time, we're not going to go through those items since nothing really stood out all that much. Next up, Dr. Webb with the Pagosa Springs Medical Center gave a presentation. I have to say it was quite interesting. Even our hospital, who pays well, mentioned having problems finding enough nurses and healthcare workers to move here due to our low housing inventory. Dr. Webb expressed that they want to be a part of the workforce housing conversation. Another interesting bit of information is that the hospital has a budget of 65 million a year, but they only squeaked out a profit of 300,000. That's less than a 2% margin. Overall, I'm impressed with Dr. Webb and her team. We have solid people here in Pergosa that are taking care of our health needs. So Dr. Webb and your team, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now on to new business and the biggest topic of all. I really should make another video about this topic only, and I probably will, attempting to really fairly explore all the sides of it. But for now, let's go into what the council discussed. Basically, council is attempting to give staff direction on what resolutions and regulations to come up with in terms of our short-term rentals. This is one of those situations where a few council members own or are building a short-term rental themselves. And the question came up, does this disqualify them from participating in the discussion or voting? The town attorney weighed in and it's up to the individual to recuse themselves or not. But a conflict of interest is if the council member primarily depends on income from STRs. If that's not the case, there still could be an appearance of impropriety. I did appreciate Mayor Vogel's comments here and that he trusts the council members uh, to make honest, objective decisions even if they own SDRs themselves. And I fully agree. They have direct experience on one side of this issue that could be beneficial for others to know. The discussion then moved on to what the Planning Commission has recommended. And this is where it gets interesting. The Planning Commission recommended basically four things. Number one, institute a two-year ownership prior to applying for a short-term rental. Number two, increase STR license fees by at least a factor of 12, which means the $500 a year would be increased to basically $6,000 a year, and all that money would go to short or uh, workforce housing. Number three, reallocate lodger's tax to the maximum extent possible to workforce housing. And number four, limit to one short-term rental license per property. And council spent about two hours discussing these items. Council said this will not address the workforce housing situation, and they basically gave a thumbs down to the planning committee's suggestions. Out of the four items, they were only interested on item one, putting a moratorium on applying for STR. And then they also expressed interest in applying a density cap on STRs, which would most likely eliminate future STRs. Durango, for example, has a 2% density cap in residential neighborhoods, and their wait list is literally decades long at this point. But to be honest, this kind of confuses me because during the hospital presentation, I thought they nailed the problem with workforce housing. That is, it's a lack of inventory. For the past 20 years, the US has been building new homes at a lower pace than the previous 20. We're now close to four to six million homes short if they had kept the same pace as the previous 20 years. So my question here is whether or not a moratorium or density cap will help with inventory or will it hurt it? What do you think? And if you look at every single community in Colorado that has put a moratorium or density cap on STRs, their housing values are higher than Pagosa, which means that our values will probably go up, up, up. Regarding the other three items, council basically expressed that it should be up to the voters if they want to divert the lodger's tax to work for housing, or if there should be an associated tax with STRs that could be used for workforce housing. So overall, we shall see what recommendations staff comes up with. I certainly appreciate their desire to know what the public thinks, 
But from my perspective of what I witnessed, it seems that they were more interested in putting a stop to new SDRs rather than new taxes to help build out workforce housing. I'm curious what your thoughts are. What are some of your solutions? What are some of your ideas? Feel free to post some of those in the comments below. I always value healthy, respectful dialogue. On to the rest of the meeting, which went rather quickly. Item two adopts the Yamaguchi South Master Plan. Item three awards to Alta Planning the East End Multimodal Planning Consultant Project. Item four allows three food trucks into the Bell Tower parking lot. Pierce voted no, believing that this isn't fair to the already established restaurants in the area. Item five amends the minimum dwelling size from 400 feet to 200 square feet, basically allowing for storage units to be built or you know maybe turning a five bedroom into a multiple residential apartment type of complex. Item six adopts the town council goals and objectives for 2021 and 2022. And item seven lifts the stage one fire restrictions. After that, uh, a big announcement was made by Rory Burnett saying that he's going to resign from council because his uh, future, I guess, obligations would prevent him from being able to attend a lot of the, the meetings. So, looks like we have another election coming up. And with that said, I fully realize, you know, this STR issue is a very, very complicated one. Um, how it relates to workforce housing is very, very complicated. So let's keep the discussion going. Um, probably we'll do another video on all the different sides of this. You know, my goal is not to influence anyone, just kind of present the pros and cons of each side so that you can properly decide what you think we should do in terms of this issue. So with that said, thanks for watching. Until the next meeting, cheers, Pagosa. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're looking to move to this magical town and need to buy or sell a home, I'd love to help guide you. And if you're a local business that would like to collaborate to make cool content, contact me. Cheers, Pagosa.